Welcome to I Care, I Volunteer on Rogers TV. I'm your host, Alima Hotaki. Today's topic is less about the volunteers on the ground and more about those behind the scenes. We'll be discussing how someone can join a board or committee. And to start things off, I'm joined by Kareen Strong, the Executive Director of Volunteer NBC, and Bonnie Yeager, who is a board member at the same organization. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah. So nice. let's start off with Volunteer NBC. Um, could you kindly tell us a little bit more about the organization? Sure, sure. So we're a volunteer center and we serve uh, residents all across the region of Peel. And we basically, um, we promote a lot of volunteering and um, we support volunteerism in order to connect volunteers to meaningful volunteer opportunities across the region of Peel. And we do that in a variety of ways, but primarily we offer a referral service um, either online through an online database where we have literally hundreds of volunteer opportunities um, and also through an in-person um, referral service where people that are interested in volunteering can come to our offices either in Mississauga and Brampton or Caledon and can um, speak with us to find to help find that perfect volunteer opportunity for them. Well you basically answered my next question oh. what are some of the <laughs> core the main mm -hmm. services mm -hmm. but um, unless yeah. you want to add or you've basically addressed yeah, them the other that. thing that, that I might want to add is um, we often uh, very much our focus is on outreach and you know getting encouraging people people to volunteer but the other component is that once we do engage volunteers we want to make sure that they have a meaningful experience and so we work very closely with our member organizations and we have approximately 180 85 organizations across the region of Peel um, that um, basically we place the volunteers with so it's also really important for them uh, to receive education on on how to recognize volunteers how to uh, properly recruit them and how to manage the volunteers so we do that through workshops and uh, offering a lot of resources and consulting and helping them out and how are board members if you can probably explain this to our viewers how are board members and executive directors supposed to work together yeah, so it's an interesting question. So Bonnie and I, actually, we, we started, to, Bonnie was, um, she's our former chair, but um, we started to work together six years ago when the organization started, uh, the Volunteer Center, and Bonnie was actually part of uh, the committee that uh, that interviewed me to hire me. <laughs> so it, um, um, but um, basically, um, the executive director uh, and the staff take care of the operational aspects of the organization and for the boards uh, for them the focus is really on making sure that um, the overall strategy is there uh, the vision is supported and um, they play a huge role in in the success of the organization um, they you know meet often on a monthly basis but then very often boards are supported by board committees um, where you play more of a hands-on role. And um, can you explain, Bonnie, maybe you can do this best, explain the role of a board member? Well, a board member does a lot of things. I mean, first of all, you have to have an understanding of the organization, um, what uh, set its mandate, its goal, its vision. That's all done at the board level. It's the executive director, who's our sole employee, who carries out that vision and is responsible for all the day-to-day -day operations. But we need to have an understanding of, of exactly what the organization does so that we can help um, develop an, uh, a, a, a vision that uh, makes sense, that works well in our community. We need to have a sense of our community to understand how the organization fits well uh, with the community. And then we have an oversight um, uh, role as well. So uh, we're the ones that are ultimately responsible if there's financial uh, trouble or uh, you know any kind of uh, trouble with the organization. I mean, it, the buck stops with the board. So we have an oversight role as well. 
uh, not interfering with Corrine in her day-to-day -day management <laughs> of the organization, but just making sure that everything runs smoothly and uh, proper reporting and so is done so that we can keep an eye on all that kind of stuff. And um, when you talk about board members, um, like you said earlier, they control a lot of the finances of an organization. Does that also mean that board members contribute financially or there's a distinction? <laughs> Well, it would be lovely if board members <laughs> did contribute financially, but it's not an obligation. <laughs> uh, and I think you're going to find uh, differences from organization to organization. Um, uh, it would be uh, wonderful if every organization had board members that would contribute. That isn't realistic. Um, a, a lot of board members bring talents uh, to the board but they don't have resources to contribute financially. Those that do have resources, um, you know, I, I think a board should expect them to provide some kind of support. But um, it's not mandatory. It's not so mandatory. Okay, that, yeah. <laughs> sure no, makes, it yeah. just isn't. <laughs> and, and, and I think we would scare away potential board members if we made that a requirement. It just isn't realistic. And how does somebody uh, know, let's say, a person who's a volunteer, how do they know that they're ready to take the next step or become a board, mem board member? How do they, are they nominated? Um, no, actually, when, yeah. they, when they first join a board, um, it basically is through a recruitment process. So uh, our member organizations would post their roles uh, for board members. And, and there are different positions within a board. So if you have a financial background, um, you would be, or you're still in school, but you're going through uh, for financing, um, your perfect role would be as a treasurer on a board. If you have an admin background, um, then perhaps the secretary role would be very fitting uh, for you to take on. So, and of course, the chair role is is really important as well. Um, somebody that has um, responsibilities in a leadership capacity. But you can grow into a board as well. And Bonnie is mm -hmm. a, a, a very much a proponent of that. Where you know we will. Um, take somebody on a committee of the board, so say it's um, an ambassador committee or finance committee, so they are already demonstrate their capacity and their abilities within that uh, framework. And then from uh, when it comes time uh, for the annual general meeting, it, that's when the board's uh, members are voted in, uh, that's a perfect opportunity to look at the people that are doing committee work and perhaps select from that, uh, from, the, from those uh, committees. And uh, where can somebody find out in terms of how to join a board? I would say the first step isn't joining the board. The first step is becoming involved in the organization. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that from the organization's perspective as well as the individual's perspective, you need to understand a little bit more about the organization. You have to make sure that you have a, that it's a good fit. It's a good um, fit uh, for where you want to go, and 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 you fit into the organization. You uh, appreciate their values and so on. So I wouldn't say you don't parachute into the board <laughs> yeah. without having some knowledge of the organization and committee work is a perfect spot to start. So uh, someone who's looking for board work, I would say get involved with an organization that you feel um, may work for you mm -hmm. in a role that, uh, that you feel you have something to contribute and has some value to that particular organization, see how it goes. Okay. Well, great. Um, thanks for having the two of you here. I'm sure it was very useful for a lot of our viewers. And we're going to take a break, and we'll be back shortly. So.
Welcome back to I Care, I Volunteer on Rogers TV. I'm your host, Alima Hotaki. Joining me now from Sistema Mississauga are the co-founder and president, board of directors, Sheena Faberi, vice president, board of directors, and John Caruso, who is a board member, as well as uh, Sarah Nicole Graydon, who is the co-founder and president and board of directors. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so let's start off with, can you tell us, uh, especially our viewers, a little bit about uh, Sistema Mississauga? Sure. Well, Sistema Mississauga provides free music instruction to students through an intensive social program that aims to inspire youth to their full potential. So we run an after-school program right now at Floridale Public School, two days a week. And it's free to all of the students, and they're able to study a string instrument, perform in a choir, and have some drumming instruction. And um, there probably, there's a, probably a segment of the population out there who might not value music the way some other people do. But what really, what makes music so special? I know it's a way you can really actually, can resonate with somebody really deeply. So why music? Um, I think for us, um, our program is much more than just a music program, it's also a social program. And so the idea of the students working together, um, working in a group, <coughs> in the orchestra, being like a family, um, and to have that interaction with each other. Um, <coughs> there's a component of our program that's kind of mentoring, so students who are a little more advanced can help the younger students. Um, so it's an element of a social uh, program uh, as well as the music program so that they're getting both sides of that. And um, how does one come go about becoming a board member? Well, I know I can tell you how I became a board member. Mm -hmm. It was through TV Ontario's Get Involved and I registered there and I was interested in any program that involved children and the arts and I waited quite a long time and then uh, I was sa actually sent an email and said this organization looks like it fits your criteria and that's how I got involved. Actually, well, I have one question. Do you have to know how to play an instrument in order to volunteer at Sistema? Because somebody like me, clueless when it comes to playing instruments, I'm just wondering, would I still be able to uh, provide my services in a different capacity? Of course. I yeah. mean, uh, I, I myself actually do play an instrument. I oh. think a lot of us happen to be in music, but uh, by no means do we like, ask anyone to be a musician in order to join. I mean, as long as you have the time and you can uh, you know, contribute to what we're doing. And what are some of the roles and positions that uh, you guys offer? Yeah, so I mean, one of the main things actually right now is uh, fundraising. So uh, we're trying to do a lot of fundraising. Um, other than that, we have... Um, <laughs> That's okay. And how does, for example, somebody know if they're ready to join, like become a board member? Is that something that somebody can just kind of like go into immediately or you have to almost prove yourself, you have to earn it? Well, you know, we, we look uh, for our board members on Volunteer NBC mm -hmm. um, and we've been very successful. Now, what we prefer is that a potential board member uh, sit on a committee and then, and if they uh, like what they're doing and they want to commit, that's how they get on a board, but it takes a few months. But, oh, okay. And in terms of, we, we, everybody always focuses on the people out in the field, the more the hands-on people. But I want to also talk a little bit about um, the people that are actually sitting behind the scenes who kind of help make it happen. How has that experience, uh, for example, how have you benefited off that experience? How has that made you a better person or grow as a person? I think a lot of us have had to do things we haven't done before. For example, uh, filling out grant applications. I've never had a reason to, and then since joining, um, I've been involved in that process. And in terms of what are some other benefits that maybe you, you've learned skills that you never knew you had or that you picked up and they've become quite useful, very important for you? I think our board is uh, maybe different from some larger organizations. Our board is very much a working board, so we're always um, putting in a lot of uh, time and energy, each of us individually with our own set of skills. Um, but at the same time, there's always things that people need help with. Might not be our area of expertise, so things like maybe we've never done a press release, but mm -hmm. we need a press release done. Yeah. And we don't have any staff that are paid, so we often will 
um, either contact someone that we know to help us along with the process, but we're always working on building new skills um, because we're really, the volunteers are the ones who are getting um, everything done for our organization. And what's usually the relationship like between somebody who sits on the board with the rest of the volunteers or the, the organization, the leader of an organization, what's that relationship like? Uh, we have uh, different kinds of volunteers. We have room monitors who are young people who help in the classroom. Mm -hmm. We do have paid teachers. The teachers are paid um, and we coordinate with the teachers if the, their needs and uh, I personally go to the classroom once in a while and enjoy the children. <laughs> And you all have probably also seen some sort of progress working with these children from, let's say, from day one compared to, let's say, a year into the program. And how has it, how has um, what you guys offer them, the services, how has that actually impacted the lives of these children? We've had a letter, we've had input from parents, but they generally uh, build self-confidence. They love it. They all love it. They can't get enough. They're disappointed. They only come two days a week. They oh. would like to come more often. <laughs> they would like it to last longer. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> they, you know, they really uh, uh, enjoy what they're, what they're learning. Wow. And what are some ways that, um, or audience, for example, ways that they could get involved? If you could give them any sort of advice in terms of if they would like to get involved with Sistema? Um, I think we definitely are always in need of volunteers, um, either volunteers in the classrooms um, or volunteers uh, to be on the board or on a committee. And really, it can be anything that um, someone else is good at. It's something that we probably need. So if you're an expert in marketing mm -hmm. or an IT specialist, I mean, those are all things um, that might not be related to music at all or a social program at all, but there's still things that our organization needs to, in order to uh, continue thriving. And if you want to just throw out your website in terms of how people can get in touch with the organization. Okay, our website address is www.systemamississauga.com. Okay, or you can check uh, Volunteer NBC's website. That's another way to get in touch with Systema. Um, thanks for coming. It's a pleasure. Um, and we are actually about to go to break, so we'll be back shortly. Welcome back to I Care, I Volunteer on Rogers TV. I'm your host, Alima Hotaki. Along with the returning Kareen, we are now joined by Deborah Thompson, the Executive Director at the VITA Center. Thanks for having, um, for coming on our show. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you guys. 
Um, so we'll start off with, um, let me direct this question first at, uh, at Deborah. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about your organization? Sure, Vita Center is an agency that works in Peel region. We've been around for over 23 years and our work primarily focuses on supporting youth and young parents. Uh, we work with uh, primarily women who are between the ages of 15 and 30 who are experiencing uh, pregnancy or there are young moms between, with children between the ages of zero and six. And how did your organization connect with Karim's organization? Well, I tell you, <laughs> <laughs> when you work in the non-for-profit organizations, you get to know your partners very well. And we are also an organization that could not do what we do without the support of volunteers. So we have about 125 active volunteers within our organization. And so meeting with Corinne, it was only logical for us to be able to work together, to get to know each other, and also to learn from each other. And so her organization organization has given us such a wealth of uh, capacity building to learn how to, to be the better volunteer managers, to uh, make sure that we're doing the best practices, and also to engage in, in conversations within the sector. Do you also feel that since connecting with uh, Volunteer MBC that just in general the, um, the quality of volunteers has been getting better and you are able to have a lot more recruits, does that make it easier for uh, your organization to run itself? Absolutely, I think so because one of the things that we've been able to do as a collaboration is work on a combined project where we're making the best um, decisions for not only ourselves but for our clients and for our volunteers. People sometimes forget that when you're a boss you have to manage your staff but when you're a volunteer manager you have to manage so many more people to make sure that they're getting the best out of their volunteer experience and Corinne's organization has helped us to be better at what we're doing with our clients and with our volunteers. And Corinne, how, uh, it must be really hard on you in terms of managing so many volunteers, how do you get through the day? <laughs> <laughs> well, at Volunteer in BC, um, we definitely were a small organization. Uh, we're now a staff of eight, and uh, but we have just working within Volunteer in BC, we have over 400 volunteers that um, assist us anywhere from our board uh, to uh, outreach roles, ambassadors, to the referral service that we offer. And the majority of them are actually very, very skilled volunteers uh, that, um, and in fact, a lot of our former volunteers are now staff members because mm -hmm. we just couldn't let them go. Mm -hmm. They were just so valuable in, in the skill sets that they were able to bring. And that's our hope when working with our member organizations that, you know, if, if somebody is volunteering with the ultimate goal of finding employment, that um, there would be opportunities uh, via networking that would become available. And what sort of impact has uh, the board of directors made on, uh, on, uh, on an organization? Well, when you're a charitable organization, you must have a board of directors. It's uh, legal. And um, so what we find is that our board of directors, it's, um, it's important that you get the right kind of person there because you want somebody who's going to make a long-term commitment, but also is going to be in a leadership role and also have a fiduciary responsibility. So it's not for the faint of heart. It's for people who have a real understanding of what it is to give back to their community in this very special way. Um, it is um, very important that you have people who can make decisions, who understand the sector, who understand your mission and your vision, and also understand that what their involvement it creates is so very important for your organization to continue to to do its mission and in case we have um, people in the audience uh, people watching right now who are interested in joining for example volunteer NBC or joining by the mm -hmm. center um, in what sort of skills can they uh, pick up what sort of benefits what can they gain out of volunteering with your organization for sure so if you're looking at the board level I mean we tend to look for people who have either business management finance legal or program experience people who have had senior experience um, people who can be visionary and strategic and think about the greater common good. If you're looking at the program and operations level, you're looking for all kinds of folk 
who have any kind of available hours and any kind of skill. And sometimes people don't realize that they have the skills that they have. So for example, mm -hmm. at Vita Center, we always have, we have what's called the Grandmas in, in Training Program, where we have a child minding center. And all we need is a couple of arms for a couple of hours a, a day to help rock a baby to sleep. And mm -hmm. you know what, there's a lot of single grandmoms out there who are in between where they might have an afternoon. And that's the kind of thing that we would look. Other kind of volunteer jobs could be administrative, helping out with the phones, you know, doing letters or, you know, maybe some computer work. All kinds of jobs for different kinds of people. And I understand that Vita Center, you offer services to teenage mothers. Mm -hmm. um, how important is that? Like in this community, do you feel like you, you're understaffed? Do you feel like you, if you had the ability, you would still like to grow your organization? Mm -hmm. Or do you feel like right now there, are, there is enough out there for a teenager who, for example, needs that extra help? Yeah, hand? unfortunately, that's not the truth. Um, we find we've had 300% growth in the last two years. And so we've found that um, the support that are needed for young moms is not only crucial, um, we say that we try to ch change two lives at a time. Because it's not only helping to change mom, it's helping to secure the, the future of the baby as well. So uh, we have a lot of volunteers who will come in and just talk about their experience as being a mom and sharing that mentoring kind of experience with them. We have others who will come in with practical experience like nursing, first aid, things of that nature. Young moms need a lot of support. They're young, they're teenagers, they're not even finished developing and growing themselves and then they have the responsibility of a child. And who knows what happens in their family when that happens. Sometimes their families support them, sometimes they don't. So much more important to have a positive role model in the form of a volunteer next to them to help them walk the path. Yeah, especially somebody yeah. who might have been through it. Exactly. So they Absolutely. know exactly what's needed. Do they That's go right. under a specific sort of training? Um, yeah, we do some screening and some training. We look at their resumes and uh, yeah, and we have ongoing training as well. Oh, wow. Yeah. And um, for in people interested in mm -hmm. joining Volunteer NBC, you can visit their website, obviously, yep. but also people who'd like to get involved with Wider Center, yeah. um, if you can let our, uh, our viewers know what's a way they could get involved? Sure, uh, same thing, website, so vitamanor.org, so that's V-I-T-A-M-A-N-O-R.org. There you go. And thank you on behalf of everyone here at Rogers TV. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you uh, next time on I Care, I Volunteer.